I went on a mission to see if I could shoot a tennis ball faster than the speed of sound by building an air cannon. Last year, I made a video where I diced a tennis ball with a racket. I built an air cannon, Mark 1, and it shot the tennis ball 560 miles an hour. That's three quarters the speed of sound. So I figured with a bit more air pressure, I might be able to get it supersonic. Mark 1 used a burst disc to fire, meaning it had a film of plastic separating the tank from the barrel, and I ruptured that burst disc with a hot wire. A burst disc is a best case scenario for an air cannon because it opens up the full diameter of the barrel to the tank extremely fast. And that's the name of the game with air cannons, releasing as much pressure and as much volume as fast as possible. The downside to the burst disc was that it was super unreliable and took a lot of time to reset. So for Mark II of that cannon, I went for a butterfly valve at the full diameter of the barrel. That way I could get as much flow as possible, assuming I could open the valve fast enough. And to open it, I set up a pneumatic cylinder. They make this style of butterfly valve with an actuator built in, but it's very slow because it has a spring inside that returns the valve closed once air is cut off from the actuator. To fire the cannon, I used a small tank and a valve to actuate the cylinder. And just like on Mark 1, I put some packing tape over the end of the barrel and drew a vacuum inside so that the ball would encounter very little drag while in the barrel. Originally, this video was gonna be called something like 500 mile an hour tennis ball versus tennis rackets. But after a very underwhelming performance of Mark 2, I decided to scrap that idea and just start on Mark III. The goal with Mark III was to build a cannon that could handle high pressure gas from a bottle of nitrogen. Before this, I was only able to fire my cannons at 150 psi because of the limit of my air compressor. Since I was building a new higher pressure cannon, I wanted to take the opportunity to build a better base that was easier to aim and position. I welded a steel base with scissor jacks at each end. On top of the jacks were laser cut clevises I welded so that the top frame could pivot as it lifted. I welded some more clevises to the tops of tubes that telescoped into the base to handle the cannon's recoil. And for the cannon itself, it's all off the shelf plumbing fittings rated to handle the 2000 PSI that's in the nitrogen tank. Now 2000 pounds per square inch is a lot of force. It's enough to launch a scuba tank hundreds of feet in the air. Take this video for example, where a guy knocked the valve off with a sledgehammer. Absolutely bonkers. Love the title by the way, very creative. I didn't build this cannon just to shoot tennis balls. This will be probably the least exciting thing I do with it. Next video, I'm planning on making a harpoon that shoots into a car door and then ripping that door off its hinge with my truck. If you're as excited about that as I am, make sure to subscribe. Speaking of my truck, I had to rent a van for this project because my brother and I have started the process of swapping the motor out from the original 305 V6 to a six liter LS. And after a whole day of shooting Mark III up to 1200 PSI, I ran out of nitrogen. And since the day was over, I did the math and found that the ball only shot 454 miles an hour. Huh. So even at 1200 PSI, it's still not faster than the Mark II. Wow. That really shows the trade-offs between low pressure high flow and high pressure low flow. I realized that even if I pumped a stupid amount of pressure behind the ball, it wouldn't matter if I didn't have enough flow. And by flow, I mean the volume of air that moves through the valve over time. There are two ways to increase the flow. Increase the diameter of the valve and increase the speed the valve opens. The reason I went with a smaller diameter valve on Mark III is because the neck of the tank was already that small, and so I thought that a larger diameter valve wouldn't help. I'm not gonna lie, I felt a little defeated that my $3,000 cannon fired slower than my cheaper and simpler cannon. But I also realized that it had more left on the table. So I think I could open the ball valve way faster. Looking at the footage, the ball valve is only cracked open a little bit by the time the tennis ball has left the barrel. So I went back to the shop and tried to open the valve faster. I finally tried one of these air actuated ball valves. I was hesitant to use one at first because I thought they were slow, but it surprised me. It looks like the actuated valve opens about three times faster than the normal ball valve. But the downside is it's only rated for 1000 PSI and not the full 2000 that I had in the nitrogen tank. But Mark II showed me that I would rather have better flow than more pressure. The actuator on top of this valve is pretty cool. It's a rack and pinion actuator, meaning it turns linear motion into rotational motion. So after those modifications, I packed up the van for the last time and headed to the field. 
since the last test, I upped my gear game by getting some of these cool protective cases that you see in the background of every sci-fi movie, and I 3D printed a case to protect the vacuum gauge on the barrel. Before I found out the final speed of the cannons, I wanted to play around and break some stuff. One thing I tried was shooting a tennis ball at an immovable object, in this case, a plate of half-inch steel. Yeah! Look at that! Cannon is safe. Oh, dude! It blew the fuzz off of it. That's bananas. Ripped the fuzz off of it. Look at that. I recognize that a tennis ball is probably the worst type of projectile to try and shoot fast or to try and shoot through stuff because it's light and squishy, which is why you can throw it out a window and it'll be fine. But that's why I thought it would be a fun projectile because it's challenging. Besides, how cool of a contrast is it to see a squishy tennis ball obliterate a watermelon? But I am curious to see how much damage a solid projectile would do fired out of this cannon. This is a tennis ball I filled with urethane resin. It's rock hard now, it's much heavier, and we'll see how many sheets of plywood I can punch through. One, two, three, four, five sheets. It went all the way through, holy crap. I wish I had more sheets in here. That, I didn't expect it to go all the way through the last one. Oh, that's spectacular. Look at all those chips. Looks like that scene from Pirates of the Caribbean where the guy's walking down the stairs. That ball blasted through five sheets like it was nothing. I'm certain it could have handled more. In my last video, a lot of you pointed out how not so slow-mo my camera is. It films at a thousand frames per second, which can be slow, but apparently not slow enough for something going 500 miles an hour. And I'm working on that. The problem is the next step up in slow-mo camera costs about $12,000, and above that it jumps straight to six figures for something like a Phantom. So if you want to help me film better videos, check out my Patreon. Since I now had high pressure nitrogen to play with, I brought back Mark II. This cannon is rated for 225 PSI, but I hadn't fired it at full pressure before because of the limits of my air compressor. I also shortened the valve arm in half so it opened faster. And now for this last effort, it was time to see if I could shoot a tennis ball supersonic. Up first was Mark II at full pressure. Then I pressurized Mark III to 1,000 PSI. Holy moly! Hot diggity! Oh my god! That seemed so fast. What is the speed of sound again? 767 miles per hour. All right, All right, 50, 50 inches in five thousandths of a second. Both sides times 200. 200. 568 miles an hour. That's not much of a gain. That was a lot of work for very little gain. <laughs> After almost three months of work, I was finally able to compare my three iterations of an air cannon. Mark I shot 560 miles an hour, Mark II, 568, and Mark III, 556 miles an hour. All three cannons fired essentially the exact same speed. Mach 0.75, three quarters the speed of sound. I think I may have shot the world's fastest tennis ball. If you've heard of one faster, let me know in the comments. One cannon was significantly more expensive and more work than the other, and they both shoot the same. Nice. One shot at 200 PSI and the other at 1000. But I think this is fascinating and I'm not at all disappointed with how this experiment turned out. I might have reached a plateau where even if I increase the pressure, it won't go faster. It's possible that when the air presses into the back of the tennis ball, it squishes the ball and makes it press into the barrel really hard. And that extra friction might cap the speed. Make sure to subscribe to see a harpoon rip a car door off its hinge and I'll see you on the next one.